In my mind, one of the most important factors for making VR immersive video look great on the Apple Vision Pro is HDR, high dynamic range. The Apple Vision Pro supports HDR, but the MetaQuest and other headsets do not. So this is one of the main advantages of working with the Apple Vision. In this video, I'm going to share how I set up my projects to edit immersive video with HDR in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Now, my primary footage is from the Canon R5C with the 5.2 mm dual fisheye lens, one of the most popular camera systems for shooting immersive video right now. And there's an extremely important detail here. When shooting with that camera, I set it to record with the color space set to Canon Cinema Gamut and the gamma set to C-Log3. That's important for the HDR workflow. The Canon Cinema Gamut is wider than the HDR color space that we'll be mastering to. So this is the best way to get the full range of color that we'll need. And a quick note about Canon's VR utility. This is the software that Canon provides to import VR video from the Canon R5C. In my main workflow, I do not use the Canon VR utility for a variety of reasons. But later in this video, we will see some options with the Canon VR utility, which I have not thoroughly tested, but do seem to support an HDR workflow. And I also have a sample clip from another camera. An engineer named Si Hang Chi created a modification for the KuCam 3 Ultra, which shoots VR180 video in HDR. He has provided a sample clip and we'll see how that works in my HDR setup. Now, before we get into Resolve, you do need to make sure that you have the right screen for viewing HDR video. You can do all your HDR setup, but if your screen can only show standard dynamic range, then your video will look very different between your computer screen and your Apple Vision Pro. Doing any color correction work for HDR on a screen that cannot display HDR is a dead end. The Apple XDR displays work great for HDR work, and current model MacBook Pros have the XDR displays built in. But of course, there are other HDR-capable displays that you can get for your computer. If you have an HDR-capable screen connected, there's still a little bit of setup to do. If you're working on a Mac, you should open the System menu in the top left, go to System Settings, then to the Displays category. Open the preset menu here, and if you are using an XDR display, you can select the XDR preset to show the full HDR color space. Or if you're using a third-party display, make sure you choose a preset that can display the full range of HDR video. Working with the full HDR color space like this will let you correctly view HDR video, but the Apple Vision Pro actually has a lower brightness threshold than the full HDR spec. So if you want, you can actually set up your computer screen to more closely match the Apple Vision's brightness levels, making it easier to judge how your video will look on the headset. So in that preset menu, you can click Customize Presets, then click the plus button to add a new preset. I'll leave the color gamut set to P3, leave the white point set to D65, leave the SDR transfer function set to Pure Power at 2.2, do not apply a gamma boost, but do enable HDR content. Then set the maximum luminance for HDR to 500 and SDR to 108. Then save that preset. Now, you don't have to leave it set to that preset all the time. You can revert back to the standard XDR preset when you're not working on your video project. But especially when you are doing your actual color correction work in Resolve, you should choose that preset then the color and the luminance of the content displayed on your computer should match how it will be displayed on the Apple Vision Pro fairly closely. Now, if you are working in Windows, I'm not familiar with any option for creating presets like this, but you can go into Windows Settings, into the Display category, and if you have an HDR display, you should make sure the HDR option is enabled there. Once your display is set up, in general, there's still a little bit of setup to do in DaVinci Resolve. Go to the DaVinci Resolve menu at the top, then go to Preferences. Go to the General category, and make sure the option for 10-bit precision is enabled. And on a Mac, you should enable the option that says Use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewers. Or on Windows, this option is Use Windows Display Color Management and HDR for Viewers. And with all that in place, Resolve will be able to display color accurate HDR video. Just be aware you will not see the full HDR color and brightness in this YouTube video, but I have been doing my work with an Apple XDR display. 
So now we're ready to set up the project in DaVinci Resolve. On my project drive, I have some CRM files. These are the original files recorded by the Canon R5C. I copy them directly from the camera's memory card. I'm going to import these raw clips directly into DaVinci Resolve. And since I'm not using the Canon VR utility, I will need to use the Cartiverse plugin instead to make some conversions. In another video on this channel, I show how to install and use the free Cartiverse plugin for DaVinci Resolve. So to learn my full workflow, you'll need to use the HDR setup that we're learning in this video and the Cartiverse conversion covered in that other video. So in Resolve, I'll create a new project and I'll name this sample and click create. With the project open, I'll click the gear button in the bottom right to open the project settings. And now the settings that you choose here will depend on your source footage. I'm going to set the resolution to 8640 by 4320. This resolution is determined by the Cartiverse workflow, so be sure to check out that other video to see why I'm using this resolution. And I'll set the frame rate to 59.94, which matches the source footage. Next, I'll go to the Color Management tab where we can set up what we need for HDR. This is the main point of this video. New projects start with the Rec. 709 color space by default. These are the settings for most standard dynamic range or SDR videos. To set this up for HDR video, there are a few different options. Now, some people will recommend that you use color space transforms in the color correction tools. And if you are shooting with the Blackmagic Cine Immersive camera and using Apple's official immersive workflow, then they will recommend you use those color space transforms. But I'm going to show a much easier setup, which I've used and works great with footage from the Canon R5C. We're going to set up the project with automatic color management. Of course, this is not the only way to do this. It's just my preferred way to do it and it's pretty easy to set up. So I'll set the color science to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. Make sure to enable automatic color management. I'll set the color processing mode to HDR and set the output color space to HDRPQ. And now Resolve will automatically convert any footage I import into the HDRPQ color space, which is an HDR standard that works on the Apple Vision headset. Resolve is able to recognize and properly convert from many different sources, as long as it knows what format that source is. And this does work with the raw files from the R5C, but still we'll check and confirm that when we import our video. Okay, so those are the project settings. I'll click save, and now I'm ready to import my raw video from my camera. In Resolve, using the buttons at the bottom, I'll select the media room. I'll click the button in the top left to make sure the file browser is visible. I'll browse to the folder on my work drive where I have those CRM files and I'll drag them to the media pool. And now it's telling me that my project has a different frame rate from the files that I'm importing. And I did already set my project frame rate to 59.94, but just to be safe, I will let it change the project settings to match. Now I also have that sample file from the modified KuCam 3 Ultra. So I'll import that clip as well. Of course, it's good to make folders and keep your imported video organized, but for now, I'll just click the edit button at the bottom to switch to the edit room and resolve. Now, I'm not going to do any significant editing yet, but I do want to make a timeline and confirm some settings. So in the media panel, I'll choose a clip from the Canon R5C since that's my main camera. I'll right click on that and choose create new timeline using selected clips. Feel free to give it a name. I do want it to make this new timeline using the project settings, so I'll leave that option enabled, then click Create. And now I have a timeline with my first clip. This is where I'll be doing my editing, but let's check and confirm that the color management is working properly. At the bottom, I'll click the color button to switch to the color room. And this is where you would do your color correction work in Resolve, which is usually something I do later in the workflow. But there are settings here that we need to confirm. At the top, you can click the Clips button to show or hide the clip line. I do want to be able to see and select individual clips on the timeline, so I do want this line to be visible. I'll select a clip, then click the Camera Raw button to show the clip's raw camera settings. And now we can confirm that Resolve is properly recognizing the color space, Canon Cinema Gamut, and the Gamma, which is C-Log3. Resolve is reading everything it needs from the camera's metadata and is completely capable of converting this cleanly to the HDRPQ color space. 
You'll get a little better quality if you change the decode quality option to full res canon. And for even more control, you can set the decode using setting to clip. And then you'll be able to change the white balance or the ISO. So if either of those were not set correctly when you shot, the camera raw controls will let you change them. And now I can edit my project and everything will be mastered in HDR. So that is the setup for my main HDR workflow using raw recordings from the Canon R5C without using Canon's VR utility. Now let's see a modification on this workflow. What if you are committed to using the Canon VR utility? Well, everything we've done so far is still valid. I'll leave this project open and switch over to the Canon VR utility. In the utility, I can select one of my clips. The Canon utility will automatically set your 3D convergence, and there's even an option to apply a black mask to cover the lenses that are visible in the frame. When we go to raw development, it's important to set color space to cinema gamut and the gamma to C-Log3, just like the settings I established in the camera. And with this set, I can export my video clip. Now I've already exported a clip with these settings, so I'll go to my project drive and open that clip. And in QuickTime, we can open the Movie Inspector panel, and under Video Details, it tells me that the color space of this file is Rec. 709, not HDR and not Canon Cinema Gamut. So at first, I believed that you could not get the full HDR color space using Canon's VR utility. But as others have pointed out, you can bring this into Resolve and it does seem to have the full Canon Cinema Gamut color space, despite what the metadata says. And thank you to AndGoose3D who pointed this out in the comments of one of my other videos. So back in Resolve, I will go to the media page and import that clip that was converted using Canon's VR utility. On the edit page, I'll add that clip to my timeline. Then on the color page, I'll select that clip. And at first, it looks like this is not going to work. We can see that this clip does not display the same color as the raw clip. Resolve is interpreting this clip with the Rec. 709 color space that we saw in the metadata. However, you can right click on the clip here on the color page, go to input color space to Canon, then choose Canon C-Log3. And now as I compare it to the raw video that we used earlier, it does seem to have the same color profile. We see that here visually. And if we look at the waveform, the differences we see here are only because one clip is still in the fisheye format because we haven't used Carterverse to convert it yet. The actual levels and the color values do seem to be consistent. And when I viewed these two clips on an HDR calibrated display, they did seem to be the same. So it does look like you can use clips from the Canon VR utility for the HDR workflow. You just need to tell Resolve to ignore the metadata and interpret it as Canon Cinema Gamut. This is an easier workflow because you don't have to use Cardiverse to make the conversions that the Canon VR utility does automatically. But there are still a few reasons why I feel a little uneasy about working with footage from Canon's VR utility. First, we did have to tell Resolve to override the metadata, which of course does seem to work pretty well, but I'm not 100% confident about how that's working. But even if you're okay with that, when you use the Canon VR utility, you actually lose a little bit of quality and even a little bit of resolution. And we also don't have any of those camera raw tools, which can be very valuable. And finally, if there are any problems with the automatic conversions that the Canon utility does, you cannot fix them manually. It may take more time and more work to make those conversions using Cardiverse, but Cardiverse gives you manual controls and the ability to fix convergence problems. Okay, so we saw how to work with raw video from the Canon R5C and converted video from the Canon VR utility. Let's take a quick look at that sample video from the modified KuCam 3 Ultra. I'll go to the media page and confirm that I've already imported that clip. I'll go to the edit page and add it to the timeline. Then go to the color page and make sure it's selected in the clips line. And you won't see the full range of color in this YouTube video, but on my HDR calibrated display, I was able to clearly see that this is displayed in HDR. But to confirm, I'll right click on that sample clip here on the color page. I'll go to input color space, and we can see it already recognized the color space from the metadata. This video is HDR HLG, 
and the automatic color management in Resolve can easily convert that to the HDRPQ color space that we're mastering to. So that's how I set up my projects in DaVinci Resolve to edit immersive video with HDR color space. Now, of course, we have not seen any of the actual color correction work. Now that the project setup is done, any color correction techniques that you would use for traditional video will work here. And there are many tutorials on YouTube to teach color correction in DaVinci Resolve. In the video description, I'll add some links to some of my favorites specifically for color correction in HDR. But just to see the general idea, I can switch over to the color wheels or any of the other color tools, select one of my clips, and I'll just make one quick adjustment to the gain of this clip. And any of the work I do here will be mastered for HDR. For now, I'll just switch back to the edit room in Resolve. Now, of course, the video clips that were imported using Canon's VR utility are displayed in the equal rectangular format, which is a standard format for editing VR video. But the raw clips from the camera are still in the fisheye format. So you will still need to convert the raw fisheye clips into the equal rectangular format. So I encourage you to check out my video on the free Cardiverse plugin, which shows how to do that conversion. And as always, feel free to leave some notes in the comments if there are other immersive video workflows that you'd like me to cover on this channel.